Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing our lesson on how to add a new sport into the Pi DFS lineup optimizer module. Uh, we're actually going to be doing that today, not just talking about it, not just exploring, but putting it to practice. Uh, we're going to be adding Dota to the eSport. Um, DraftKings recently started doing Dota tournaments at their last major um, and with the, the World International Title Championships, whatever you want to call it, coming up in about a month. I guess, yeah, about a month-ish. I think it's in September. So that coming up, there's probably going to be a whole lot of tournaments and a lot of money to be made and money to be lost. So let's go ahead and dive in. And the first thing I am going to do for you guys is I am deleting the PyDFS lineup optimizer module from my computer. And I'm going to re-pip install it right here so you know. Okay. Oh. I'm going to try to import it so you guys can see that it's not here. No module named that. So we're going to install it cleanly so you can tell I have made no changes to it as of this point. Let's go ahead and restart clear output. Now we've imported. Equals. We're going to just try sport equals Dota, site equals DraftKings captains, I think is what it is. Is that right? Um, let's see, constants, DraftKings underscore captain underscore mode. Okay. So just again to double down. Captain's motor captain, captain mode. So just to double down, show you that Dota is not actually a sport in the module as it stands right now on my computer that I'm recording on. Kier Dota, that's not something it recognizes. So how do we add a sport? It's a great question. The first step, um, assuming it's gonna be easy to do, that means that there is an existing sport slash site combination that is going to be set up similarly, at least as how, at least as far as the lineup is concerned, right? So it's not so much it's the same, but it's close enough it gives you a starting point. Because the number one rule of writing code is don't write something that's already been written, okay? You're just wasting your time. It's a, it, there, there's something to be said for writing things on your own to learn, okay? And that's true. So when I interpret that, I think like we're doing all of this instead of just downloading my Jupyter notebook I provide um, and using it, download it, write the code in your own and think about what you're writing, why it does what it does and what it's doing and try to understand that as you're typing it yourself that helps reinforce it. But if somebody's already written it, you don't have to come up with it from scratch on your own. So. First thing we're going to do is acknowledge the fact that Dota 2 is very similar to League of Legends, um, both in the game itself and the overarching game style, the genre of game, as well as how it's going to be played daily fantasy wise. So a couple differences, if we open up um, some of the code we went through last time, um, we're going to go look at some League of Legends stuff. So we're going to open up the settings.py. Um, and that's going to be the settings in the DraftKings captains mode. Let me show you where that is. Sites, DraftKings, captain mode. Then we're going to open up that setting. See, that's what I have open right here. Because we don't care what the settings are for FanDuel, because FanDuel is not doing Dota. We don't care about FanBall. We don't care about Fantasy Draft. We don't care about all that. We care about DraftKings captain mode, because that's how Dota is played. So we're gonna open up the settings there and take a look. And that's what we're doing right now. So we can see that just kind of the base is gonna be positions with flex. You have a captain and then you can pick whatever the heck else you want after that to fill out the lineup. Okay, that's fine. So our class DraftKings captain mode settings, again captain and then just utility. Okay, fine, makes sense. Come down here, we see site registry, 
DraftKings LOL settings, Sport, League of Legends. When we look at this and we can see it's a little bit different. We have a couple rules specified here that you don't see with these guys. Um, and that kind of gets back to what we were talking about last time where the way this is all set up is you'll have a base set of rules that get imported and then you have the opportunity to define different settings or different rules for different scenarios based on what the sport or the site is or what the, the solver you're using is, anything like that. So here you can see for football, so these are what you want to pull in when the sport is football and you want to pull in positions with flex. So this is what you're pulling in when you do football. For basketball, you don't pull in anything special. So you just run captain and utilities. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now you might be thinking those are both six man lineups with a captain and whatever the heck else you want after that. Why does it have to be different? It needs to be different because you're running the CSV importer and those need to match your positions here. So if we were to go onto DraftKings right now and download a captain's mode CSV template for basketball and for football, football would have captains and flex people, basketball would have captains and utility people, okay? League of Legends has captains, top, jungle, mid. I have no idea what, idea what ADC is because I don't play League of Legends. Support, and then you pick a team. Okay, so Dota is similar. Dota has a captain. And then while you have the similar positions, you have a top player, a mid player, an off lane player, a hard support, a soft support, and then you pick the overall team. That's not how Dota runs their daily fantasy. So if we look at our sheet here, you can see we have our cores. And you'll notice that every player is gonna be doubled up because any player can be picked as a captain and any player can be picked as a core, okay? So, we have our cores, we have our supports, and we have our teams. So it, it's combining that top, mid, and jungle into cores, and the two support positions are support positions. And then you have your captain. So we can't just copy and paste straight over the League of Legends information. That's what we're getting at here. So, other than that though, it's going to be the same. We have the same constraints here. You can, or sorry, here, you can only have four from one team and that includes the team you're using. So if we were to use, say, Liquid is our team, then we could only have three Liquid individual players in our lineup, right? So that's gonna be similar to all the other sports we play. You know, you can't just load up on one team and there has to be at least two games for captain's mode. Otherwise, you'd have more than four people from one team, obviously. So that's all the same. So we're just gonna copy, and we're gonna paste that right here. Okay, and remember we have what, a captain, we have three cores, okay. So we're just gonna replace those here for those three positions, because we don't differentiate between what type of core they are, we just know they're a core player. And then you'll want to make sure that we match our position here, okay? We don't want to put, we don't want to spell out support if it's only looking for sup when it reads that in. So we have core, 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 and then we just need to change this one to be sup, sup, sup. All right, so we've defined really the only settings we need to for Dota. We need to add Dota to be a sport that we can choose. Simple enough. Let's come back here, Dota equals Dota. Now it's a sport. Problem solved. All right, save both of those. But we are going to go ahead and now that we first tried to create an optimizer for Dota, it didn't work obviously because it wasn't in. Now we've added our stuff in, we are going to go ahead and if I can type, that would be amazing, get optimizer site dot DraftKings Captain Mode Sport dot Dota Sport has no attribute Dota What if we just restart since we redid everything? Ta-da! 
Yeah, so that's another good lesson, I guess. Um, a lot of times when you see, when you pip install something, it tells you you may need to restart your kernel for those changes to take effect. Um, that's all that just happened here. We had not restarted our kernel since we had made those changes. So just restarting our kernel, and then it ran fine. So now that it thinks it's running, right? It says like it, it didn't give us an error, it loaded that in as the optimizer. We're gonna go ahead and feed in these salaries from the last uh, last major. Optimizer dot load players from CSV. And we need that file path. DK salaries dot CSV copy as pass. Okay, then once we've loaded our players in, we want to create a lineup sphere object. So optimizer dot optimize and equals 10. So our lineup and lineups and lineup. All right, so now we can see we have our lineup here. Captain, core, 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 support, support, team. As we can see, they are different lineups, so we're getting different lineups each time. We're coming in underneath our salary, and we got lineups. So then from there, uh, we will go ahead and do what we normally would do for exporting to get it out into our data frame, dump it into our Excel spreadsheet, and load it up to enter with. And I believe that's, let's see. Yeah, yeah. We, we talk about it a little more in depth um, going through the write up here, but I, I'm not gonna read through all of this again. This is just a more detailed version of what I just did, really taking it slow. But I think the key points here are what we did here. You add a new sport, you add it here. If you add a new site, you add it here. If you need to find new rules for it, you go to where you would need to go in that file path. Um, whether it's in sites, draft kings, and then you would create a new folder here if you had a new mode for that site. You would create a new folder here if you had a new site period. If you needed to make some changes to the site registry, which you probably wouldn't, you could do that here. This is pretty much just telling it where to call to get the settings for everything. And yeah, that's really it. It's not terribly complicated. Um, but yeah, that's it. I mean, it, you can come in here and you can make changes to all sorts of different things. If you wanna look at how stacks are made, you can define a new type of stack if you're unsatisfied with the stacks that are presented that are built in. You could come in and create your own stack type. That's the player group, optimizer stack, base stack, team stack, like all these different stacks here. So you could read through and see how they're building stacks and then create your own stack type you wanna just be able to use and not have to define all these arbitrary rules every time you run the optimizer. So it really bridges the gap uh, and really cuts down on the downsides of using a package like this that's already pre-developed. Pre um, Cause that is one of the perks of building our own is that it was fully customizable whatever we wanted. The only limit was what we could figure out how to code. And if we start from a spot like this, and don't get me wrong, that's a great learning exercise. That's why I started with that because I wanted to have an understanding of how to do it. And then once I did, I realized that I had some shortcomings in my coding ability and knowledge with some more advanced techniques and strategies. And I was really just stuck scratching my head. I didn't have the time to put into it to figure some things out. And I came across something like this, started exploring it, and realized that I don't have to do everything myself. I can start from a point like this, and then we can just keep building onto what we need. And I think that's the approach all of you should take in your endeavors here, whether it's web scraping, whether it's lineup optimization, or whether it's fantasy point prediction. If you can find, and maybe you're using me as that point, you know, you're starting with what I'm giving you, and then you're building off of that, and that's great too. I hope you are. Um, that, that is the point of this. If everybody's just copying what I do and doing the same thing, I mean, I appreciate it. It makes me feel good that you're using what I'm making, but I, I feel like you could do a lot more taking it and branching it off into the exact things you want to do. So that's it. Rant over. Um, 
that's all I've got for this video. It's going to be another quick one. I just wanted to get this through there because I think going over this topic will open a lot of doors to anybody who is more technically sound and technically minded and wants to understand how it works and do their own thing with it. So I think that's a good building block for that. We fit the basics of how to kind of understand Python packages and how we can tweak them to fit our needs. The only things you really need to watch out for, which is both good and bad, it's good because if you mess something up and don't know how to fix it, you can just uninstall it and reinstall it. Downside is if you ever update it, if you pip install and you already have it and it finds a new version, it's going to download and it's going to override all of everything you've done. So do be careful with that. I believe somebody called that out in a comment on the last video and I appreciate that. I didn't make it very clear when I was talking about how if you could just uninstall and reinstall to get a clean slate, but that does also work the other way. If you install a new version, it's going to erase the changes you've made. So good clarification there. Shout out to everybody in the Patreon. Thank you very much for your support. I really do appreciate it. Um, I know I haven't been online too much lately, but life's gotten a little bit busy. Um, I will actually be out of town, going to a wedding when this video drops. Um, so yeah, hopefully we've got safe travels on my end. Hopefully if any of you are traveling, hopefully you can travel safely. And do be safe out there. It's a dangerous world. See you guys next time.